Hey up everybody. This has to be one of the biggest beaches I've ever been on. I'm just on the outskirts of uh, Southport. And why have I come to Southport? Well, I had no plans on going on a trip this morning and I woke up and I were on my phone having a coffee like you do. And an article come up from yesterday in Daily Express. I mean, I don't read Daily Express, but you know what? When you swipe left on your phone and all them adverts and stuff come up. And it's, it said the famous UK seaside town now in serious decline. And I thought, oh, well, you know what they like with clickbait. But I had a look and uh, I clicked on it and it was Southport. And I thought, well, I've not been to Southport. It's not that far away, he says. Well, it's not, it's about 90 miles from Barnsley, but it took me like over three hours to get here because of traffic. And I thought, is it as bad as what they're making out? Because I know what papers are like. And I did a bit of research online and I went on a few websites and there's a lot of people bringing it down. You do usual search on, uh, on YouTube and it's all the same. Oh, you know, making out what a dump it is. And I don't want to, I don't want to be like that, but you know, if it, if it is, if it's gone downhill, then we need to sort of investigate. So, what beach am I on? I forgot, <laughs> but it's the beach right next to Pontins. Is it Ainsdale Beach or something? That might be wrong. There's all the sand dunes. There's not many people about, but there's all sand dunes there and there's some like rare birds and frogs that sort of make that their home. And in the background there, you can see that weird building, which is, uh, it was part of Pontins, I think, which is sadly closed down. Off in the distance that way, we've got, in fact, I can see Blackpool Tower. You'll not be able to see it. I don't know if I can zoom in. I can see Blackpool Tower right off in the distance. And just further down, we've got Southport sort of town that way, which is where I'm gonna go next. In that direction, you've got Liverpool. And then that way, that's the Irish Sea. And you've got some sort of oil rig type thing going on out there. And I can see a big tanker off in the distance. They're very faint, but what a lovely beach. And I think this is like this for miles. Now this is a, one of those car parks can pay on an app, so that's good. I like paying with my app now, because you can top it up wherever you are. Right there we parked, I've parked for four hours, and that's cost 5 90 So we're near the front here, there's a little kids park there, and the start of the, the promenade, promenade, I can hear music. Right, we're going to head down into this uh, Lord Street area. The town centre. I can see Victoria there. Because of course, this was a really famous Victorian seaside town.
and these resorts would have been absolutely packed out years ago. That's seen better days, hasn't it, Leo's Bar? This is nice. You've got this column here and this uh, this building on the left, these sort of like classical columns, I like that. This will be obviously, oh, it's a, a memorial, a war memorial. Oh, and that's here beside, I like that. That's, that's really nice. Now, is this Lord Street? I think it is. Shall we start at that end? Right. I want to go down this end and start down here. bumped into a couple of subscribers there I was it was filming along this Lord Street and they were Harry and Margaret Harry from Northern Ireland and it was lovely to meet you there they were sat having a nice coffee in the Sun and I must say I like it on here this is nice look there's some shops that are, that are closed down but that's the same everywhere it is really leafy some of the sort of uh, the lovely, what's the word for it? <laughs> the the raw tying sort of, uh, the roofs and stuff. The architecture's lovely. Yeah, it's really nice. Now, the rumor is that some of the streets in Paris were based off this Lord Street. There's water bikes again. There's a nice looking church there in the background, so I'm gonna have a quick look at that and uh, then I'll head back down to Lord Street and get the rest of it and go the other way. I like that house there, uh, there's some lovely houses on this street. And down that way, they're really big houses. I'm not talking about that monstrosity in background. But, yeah. Here's the church, I wonder if we can go in here and have a look. There's a few cars, I don't know if I can go in and have a look, but we'll see. The church is open, of course we can. It'll be cold in here. I'll tell you what, I don't know if it's just me, but I heard when he were playing the organ in there. Only the crumbliest, flakiest chocolate. I'm sure that's what he were playing. What was that? What were it? Cadbury's Flake. Go back and listen to it. It might just be me. It might be because I'm hungry and I'm thinking about chocolate. I've just walked past what looked like a lovely pub. There seems to be some good pubs here. And apparently, this is the smallest pub in Britain, so we'll go and have a look at that as well. Now, there's an Irish bar here, but they're blasting out football, which, you know, let's have a look. So, what game is that?
So it looks like Romania are playing Ukraine. That looks interesting, the old post office, that's a bar. Sinclair's, that's where I met uh, Harry and Margaret. But I didn't have a drink. That looks nice, the bold. You could be in Paris. This is nicer than Paris, I'm telling you. Now this bit obviously is the centre of the town and it, what a beautiful monument to mark all those fallen in war. It really is impressive. Faithful to her we fell and rest content. So this is the town centre bit. I mean, it's like most town centres, it's not brilliant, but it is what it is. A lot of people focus on this street, which is just one small street. And then they'll use it for a thumbnail. Let's have a look, it's terrible, isn't it? And it's a shame because it's a beautiful old sort of walkway, this, isn't it? It just needs some work. Right, so I'm walking to somewhere I want to show you. And it's further than I thought. Oh, I'm knackered. It's a big old place, isn't it, Southport? I'm going miles, I should have drove there, but I thought, no, I'll keep it and I'll walk it. But I just hope it's open and it's really gonna be worth it because it's going to be the best bit on this video. Honestly, are you ready for this? Right, I have finally made it. Probably, I mean, I, I love to show you all these attractions, these museums and these wonderful places, but this one is probably gonna be the best one you've ever seen. Are you ready for this? This is gonna blow you away. This is gonna blow you away. This there were a guy waving to me then and he didn't realise camera was on me. Right, you ready? The best attraction you've ever seen. This is what I vlog for. And in the museum we show about 200 machines that have been uh, sort of rare ones that have been restored. Uh, the collection has about 1,700 machines. Oh, really? So the bigger horse-drawn ones, and uh, we received one not long ago from Lord's Cricket Ground. Wow. Weigh, weighs about two ton, would have cost perhaps twice the price of a house. <laughs> Goodness me. But this one's in the Guinness Book of Records, been ever changing the model for 70 years. Right, okay. Um, if you equate that with any other product, say your mobile phone, for instance, yeah. uh, in three or four years' time, would you still want that? And this company said, we've made this machine, it's perfect, why change it? And exactly. Are you into motorbikes? <laughs> it's a funny, funny you should say that. I'm not into motorbikes, no, but a lot of my friends are. <laughs> okay. uh, well, this one's uh, Vincent Motorbikes. There's a okay. lot of um, uh, car companies and motorbike companies that made lawnmowers, but there's only one lawnmower company that made a car, and when we go upstairs, I'll um, show you that one. Right. Uh, Vincent were one of the best bikes they were, uh, yes, I've heard of that, yeah. Uh, a lot of unique designs on their uh, bike. That one may be possibly of interest. It belonged to Albert Pierpoint. Okay. Um, Albert uh, retired in Southport. He was Britain's most famous executioner. Really? He hung 400 people and got paid £15 from the government uh, per execution. And his lawnmower cost him £15. 
and we always wondered who, who it was. Or, yeah, uh, gosh. Yeah. Uh, um, this was the first robot lawnmower. Okay. Um, cost a million pounds to develop. Oh. Uh, just runs on daylight. Yeah. And the solar panels are the same that's fitted on the space shuttle. Wow. And it wanders around like a sheep and the, the uh, computer inside it, when it senses the grass is a bit long in that area, it'll cut all the grass in that area and then wander off to the next area. Wow. That was really good, actually. I'll, I've had to cut that down an absolute load because I've been in there and the problem is I bet I've been in there an hour and a half chatting to the... The guy that set that up and it's his passion and that was Brian who I was talking to there. What a lovely guy. And then I had to turn my camera off after a bit because my battery were running out and he's told me some really interesting stories. So he was telling me all these stories and there were things, uh, old tales and things and where certain sayings and words come from and like Shanks's pony. Well, uh, Shanks, they were a, a lawnmower company and obviously the pony were the pony that pulled the lawnmower. And then we got onto a bit about, uh, we were talking about where old words come from and stuff. And it was on about the, uh, the term top dog. So you know when they have them big saws, you know, you have one man at each end and they're cutting trees up. You'd have one man in a ditch and the other man on top and the one at the top would be called the top dog and that was the best job because the underdog would get covered in crap. Absolutely filthy. So you imagine they're in the middle of nowhere and it's like many years ago and they're in forests and there's all muck and crap and everything. And occasionally the underdog would get something in his eye. And the only way, apparently, this is what Brian told me, the only way that they could get something that out, whatever was in his eye was for the top dog to come down and lick his eye. That's what Brian said. I don't know if you were winding me up on that, but it don't surprise me. Olden days. Yeah, so, get there. It was only three quid to go in as well, brilliant. He's given me loads of literature to read. I'm gonna be like a lawnmower expert, me now. That's a grand old building, isn't it? Look at that lovely shop. Isn't that beautiful? We've got a bar here. Is it a bar or a restaurant? Vincent. You know, the, some of them they just need a bit of tidying up, don't they? I don't know why. See, if I had one of them shops, I'd be tidying that up and painting that. This is the famous Scarry's Brick Hotel and Maloney's Bar, which is owned by Britannia. I like the little lanterns outside. And this street looks nice. This takes us towards the front now and I'm really thirsty, so I'm gonna to have to get a drink. But there'll definitely be a bar down the front. I don't know what to do for tea. It's at half five now. First world problems, isn't it? What do I do? Do I get something in a pub or? Or do I cook something in van? So while I'm thinking about food, have you seen that in news, that terrible, shocking news about the, uh, well, I think it's shocking, that Arab billionaire that's buying up all UK's fish and chip shops. It's unbelievable. What's he called? Sultan Vinegar. Eh? <laughs> There's the Pleasure Island off that way. When I got here, I could hear singing. So I'm gonna head that way. Right, just down here, we've got apparently 
Britain's smallest pub. But I have been in pubs before and they were apparently Britain's smallest pub. So I don't know how they work it out, but that's what it says. It's called the Lakeside, I think, Lakeside Bar. We're gonna go and have a look at that. There's a lake over here. I just need to have a bit of a rest. I need to charge up my cameras and my microphone and uh, I need to call Helen. I've got to check in and hopefully have a nice beer. The smallest pub in Britain. And I'm going to have a beer. This looks very nice. So it's not a bad little pub this. Quite liking it. Nice view and everything. I've gone for a pint of the uh, White Witch from the Moor Houses Brewery. Nice beer, this. Oh, that is lovely, very smooth, gorgeous. And as I'm starving, I've got myself a bag of Lancashire crisps. I've just gone for plain because I'm boring. So I'm gonna sit and eat my crisps and have a beer and decide what I'm going to do next. So that pub I've just come out of is behind me and there's a car park here, let me show you. And there's quite a few motorhomes. Now can I stay here the night? Or is it just for day campers? Let's have a look, there's a sign over here and if we can I might spend the night here. Right, so that is my spot for the night. Apparently it's a regular van life spot. It's right on front, the sun's shining. It's next door to that banging pub. That is perfect. And what's even better, there were, <laughs> there were a couple sat eating a curry outside in the sun outside the van. And I said, oh, excuse me, are you, are you, are you all right here for the night? And they're only subscribers, aren't they? Well, they watch me. I don't know if they're subscribers, but they've seen me on YouTube. She says, you're him off YouTube. I says, I am. Karen and Dennis, lovely to meet you. And they were eating a right nice curry. <laughs> so I'm tempted to do that as well. How good's that? Get a curry. In back at van. Oh, what to do? So yeah, I'm heading back uh, towards the van now because my ticket's about to run out and then I'm going to just park there for night. Five quid for 24 hours, boom. So, as you probably guessed, this is the pier and it is really, really sad that it's shut. It's the second biggest pier in the UK after South End. And if you've seen my South End video, you know I walked down that, that took forever. But you can get a train down both of them. I'm gonna have two little rants here now, okay? The first rant is this pier, this, this needs sorting because that would make a massive difference to this area. And it's been closed now for over 18 months. It was built 160 years ago. And then they did loads of repairs to it about 20 years ago with new steel. And then it needs doing again. So you think, what crappy steel did they use? Probably Chinese. They didn't use Sheffield steel, put it that way. You know, they've been in consultation for, for all that time. 
and you just know what it's like. They've probably spent millions already with these companies just doing quotes for work and stuff. I mean, people might correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, it needs doing, doesn't it? Because it's a big attraction and it'll make a massive difference to this, this area. Just walking down, I'd have been walking down that this evening, gone to a cafe on end or whatever's there, bar, It'd be fab. And my second rant is, this morning I read an article in Daily Express and it was all about, hang on, let me bring it up. Let me try and find it. The famous UK seaside town in serious decline as nobody stays longer than three hours. And then basically it was an article just slagging off Southport. And then I do a lot of searching on YouTube and stuff. And you see the usual crap. People painting a, a sort of bad image of a place because they just find a street that's got some boarded up shops and they film that and they're like, oh my God, isn't it terrible? Well, I've come to investigate and I really like it. It's lovely. It's really nice. There's obviously issues. I mean, the pier's shut, that needs sorting. And that pleasure park were closed. I don't know if that's because of, you know, it's a Monday at end of the day. But for God's sake, it's a lovely town. That Lord Street's really nice. Yeah, there's a few empty shops on, but it's still nice. I don't get it in myself. <laughs> you know, all these seaside towns have the challenges. And that's mainly because of the advent of cheap overseas flights and cheap package holidays. But what do we do about it? Do we just sit there and complain? You know, we've got to support our seaside towns. Come here, you know, spend a bit of your money, have a day out with family or a weekend. We've got to support them. It's a lovely place and I strongly recommend it. Anyway. That's my little rant. I've got to decide what I want for my tea. Are geese gonna be noisy, do you think? <laughs> I don't want to be waking up at bloody six o'clock in the morning by noisy geese. And there's a load over there. So this is my garden for the day. It's five pounds for 24 hours. They're gonna be noisy, aren't they? There's a few motorhomes there already. I says, I'll go and have a couple of beers in there but I've got some uh, beers from Morrison's. I've got a couple of fruit beers, what I were right craving, because they don't have them in there. It's a good pub, but I might just sit it back at van. I don't know. And I'll tell you what else I've done as well. I've not fetched my chairs or anything because they're in my lockup. The problem is having a small van, I'm always putting stuff in and out of my lockup. We're going on a campsite, me and Helen, uh, at weekend and I'll take chairs and everything there. I need to tidy up, I've got me, uh, what's it called there as well? I need to put that in front. Right, I'm in, but that sun's coming through. I'll have to shut that. I've got windows open, because it's quite warm. I've put my shorts on. There's some boat people practicing their rowing on the lake there.
one healthy Morrison's paella done in a frying pan. I would argue that it's better when you do it in a frying pan because you get like the burnt bits and I think it's more authentic. Mm. It's nice. And a Castile Rouge. So a lovely cherry beer. Available from Morrison's. I don't like Morrison's to be honest, but it's the only option I had. So I'm going to sit here, watch the geese, and eat my paella. And then decide what I'm going to do for the rest of the evening. Oh, do you know what? It's not even late, but I'm tired. So what I'm going to do, it's only five past eight. But I'm going to get in bed. <laughs> and I'm going to watch a bit of Netflix. Fanny in the bed. I've got to, I've got to be honest with you now. I've got to be up front with you all. I know. <laughs> I don't always make bed. I just leave it down most of the time. But it depends what I'm doing. But when I'm making a video, you see, you want it to be tidy, man. I remember you get a lot of stick off people. I get a lot of crap. I weren't going to mention this, but I think I will now. You get you get a cute, oh, you're not doing proper van life. You're not full time, you're lying. And to be honest, I don't care what people think, think what you want. But their reason for saying that is because oh, it's too tidy in your van. Yeah, well, one, you're a scruff. And two, I tidy it van when I'm filming. That's what I do. And I always talk about that I've got a lock up when I pour my stuff. I've never hit that. Right, I'm just making bed. And I started filming making bed. And then, you know when you're on your own all day and you like talking and I just talk to you guys and then I just realised I've been sat here for about 30 minutes just ranting about everything. <laughs> And I thought, I'm not going to can't put that on. What am I thinking of? It's like, you know when you get a bit of abuse off somebody on a text? Uh, not a text, on a, like a, well you probably don't know, but on a comment or something, you get a bit of an abusive comment. I type out like a really long answer and then I just delete it, I don't send it. That's what I've just done now, I've had a rant about everything that's wrong with YouTube and all that sort of stuff. But I thought, that's just not going to get on, whilst this video will be four hours long. I'm doing it again now, so quit that. I'm making my bed, I'm gonna get in bed, I'm gonna watch telly, and then I'll be asleep in a bit. So, I've pulled my bits out. I've done it wrong. Right, do I leave that open? Okay. My bed is set. It's, it's half past eight. Somebody asked me how I do my... Oops, that's the torch. I don't want to put the torch on. Somebody asked me how I do my telly. Now, I have this telly. It's called... I don't know what that says. Can you make out what that says? Hang on. Can you make out what that says? AV text. And it's a smart TV. Let me turn the tracking off. Turn that off. It's a smart TV. I've got two things. I've got an actual aerial that I can put up. That window's still open, so it just plugs in and sits on roof. Magnetic. So I can use that, and I can get normal TV, like Freeview. But like a lot of you, I just don't watch telly. I'm not interested in it. Because they're full of crap, like newspapers. See, The Office, I prefer English version. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, I really like that. I've watched them quite a bit. I don't know. And this is what I do, I can never think what to watch. I like war stuff. Hitler and the Nazis, look.
it says it's a disturbing deep dive into the global global conflict of will. You see, that's what I'm going to want to watch. I'm going to shut window because them geese are in the head. Right, and we're going to watch this. Oh, I might even shut that a bit. Look how dark that goes then. Anyway, I'm going to lay and watch my uh, Hitler documentary. <laughs> And uh, I would like to thank you yet again for joining me on this video. Please remember to like and subscribe. I'd hopefully see you in the next one, which I have no idea where I'm going to be, to be honest. I'll have to give that some thought. But thank you. Uh, please keep commenting like you do, sending me messages. If you follow me on Facebook on the By the Curb Facebook page, appreciate that. You can send, you can contact me through there, and uh, I thank you. <laughs> I thank you for watching my channel. I don't know why you watch it, but you do. So thank you. All right. Night night. Them bloody geese are going to drive me crackers. I hope geese go to sleep. I hope they're not going to be geesing about all night. Can you hear them? What time do geese get up in the morning? This is probably the end of this video. But if any sort of geese shenanigans or anything happens, I will try and record it. So it might not be the end, but if it is the end, I thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. Okie dokie. City.